Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Insufficient evidence derailing Indicom investigations. St. Elizabeth Police probing six break-ins and the murder of a man of unsound mind. And later in sports, Herbert Morrison and St. Catherine to batter for national under-19 basketball title later this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Machine Masters and here are the details. A social intervention referral program for the public to receive financial assistance is being considered to assist families involved in cases by the Independent Commissions of Investigation, Indicom. But how would the program work? Jamila Maitland explains. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, says it received 968 new complaints in 2022. However, not all of them could amount to charges because of unsubstantiated evidence. The Commission believes that the social issues faced by many of the alleged victims could be the reason why. To this end, a social intervention referral program is being considered. Fifteen police officers were charged in 2022 for various crimes, while others were recommended for disciplinary action. The security force's ability to de-escalate incidents involving mentally ill people continues to top the list of concerns by Indicom. In 2022, of the 30 reported incidents involving the police and people with mental health issues, 12 of them were fatal. The others were wounded. But the incidents show that only two of them had a firearm, some had knives, stones, and a piece of board. It's why Commissioner of Indicom Hugh Faulkner is urging the police and soldiers on and off duty to use appropriate force when engaging them. We're not asking the security forces to put their lives on the line. Seek to disarm. Seek to subdue. Utilize non-lethal weapons. Just Monday night, the police shot and killed a man in Trenchtown that reportedly had mental health issues. According to the police, they were fired upon. A firearm was allegedly recovered, but the residents have disputed the claim. Meanwhile, Indicom said the new Road Traffic Act also brings into sharp focus the need for body-worn cameras. We find that footage where you can establish that the instrument that captured the images is in good working order, that there was no interference, no editing, no tampering, and that you can identify the author of the images is extremely helpful. According to Indicom, the body camera should also be worn by officers on planned police operations as it can help vindicate officers accused of unlawful force and provides an independent evidence of the interaction. In a matter of months, our quarterly reports will give data on the number of incidents in which body-worn cameras have been used and data with regard to the number of incidents where it was not engaged. Jamila Maitland for TVJ News. The St. Elizabeth Police are investigating a series of break-ins in the communities of Leeds and Ginger Ground. Reports are that between 10 p.m. last night and 4.30 a.m., at least three houses and three businesses were broken into. Among the items stolen were two poker boxes, cigarettes, a CCTV camera and a liquor. In the meantime, a man believed to be of unsound mind has been found dead. Residents say the man was seen walking naked through the communities. A taxi operator saw the body about 5.30 and called the police. The body was seen with a rope tied around his neck and feet. An urgent appeal this afternoon from the Cuban ambassador to Jamaica for greater support to help boost the economy of the Spanish-speaking country. He made the appeal while addressing the recent sitting of the St. Mary Municipal Corporation. Halchin Burke reports. Despite being a major help to several countries globally on the education and health front, economically Cuba is struggling, especially since the imposition of the United States embargo on trade which has limited its economic possibilities. It's why Cuban ambassador to Jamaica, Fermin Gabriel Quinones Sanchez, is calling on the Caribbean region, which it has greatly assisted for decades, to help in giving the country an economic boost. Solidarity, cooperation is what our nation needs 
to achieve our development. But despite over 243 measures being implemented by the United States, the Cuban government says deeper relations will be formed with the Caribbean region, especially in the area of food security. It's why Member of Parliament for St. Mary Western, Robert Montague, has issued a call for the Jamaica Agricultural Society, JAS, to assist in the training of farmers in Cuba. We have a lot of experience in Jamaica growing bananas and plantains, and the Cubans love their plantains and black-eyed peas, and which we have a lot of experience in St. Mary, the growing of peas. And, and also I would want to ask the mayor to engage our tourist sector so that we too can offer training at the various levels in the tourism industry to assist our brothers and sisters in Cuba. In, a, in agriculture, there are a lot of opportunities to gain experience from you, from Jamaica's uh, agriculture, from farmers, and a lot of benefit can be taken from the knowledge of the Cuban scientists and the Cuban researchers in agriculture. The Cuban ambassador says one of the most important aspects is for Cuban farmers to learn how to sustain their crops through adverse weather conditions. We know the technology, but we don't have access to technology. We don't have access to financing. And many things could be done. And Cuba is ready. Maybe Jamaican entrepreneurs can be thinking of going to invest in Cuba. We have the land. I'll Shane Burke reporting for TVJ News. The National Works Agency, NWA, is again coming under fire from councillors of the St. James Municipal Corporation. They continue to take issue with the agency's non-attendance at the monthly meetings. Councillor for the Montego Bay West Division, David Brown, argues that the NWA's absence is nothing short of disrespectful. Oh dear! They disrespect the people of Montego Bay and St. James. They are in charge of the major thoroughfares of the road, Mr. Manning. Councillor Brown says there are issues needing immediate attention and with no representation from the NWA, the blame is shifted to other agencies. He's calling on Minister with Responsibility for Roads to intervene. I am calling on Minister Warmington to send... I can do anything I want. <laughs> to send a representative each month, Mr. Chairman, to your noble municipal corporation so we can conduct and manage the business of the people of Montego Bay. Residents of some St. Thomas communities are being promised more reliable water service following the opening of a water facility in the eastern part of the parish. Anthony Log reports. One. Two, three. Running water from a tap. While many take it for granted, some people in St. Thomas have to protest to get it. Some of the unrest happened as recently as two weeks ago. The National Water Commission's regional manager in charge of St. Thomas explained what's causing the water shortage in the parish. Our primary challenges would include aged pipelines, aged systems including our facilities, growing communities and in your case you are served by the apple farm system which is stretched very wide and what it means is that we have had to be doing quite a bit of regulation there are some people with low service low pressure no service at times as we do our regulations and all of that she was speaking at the commissioning of the nwc's fraser hill water facility the pump will serve the people of Duckinfield, Dalvey and Fraser Hill in eastern St. Thomas. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Matthew Samuda, says the government will continue to invest in water infrastructure. When we come and give water to areas that haven't had it before and in our 60 years, we, you know, as a state, we've not been able to provide, that part of it can't come with gloating. That has to come with an acknowledgement that as a state it has taken us too long to bring water to all of our people. When we looked at the capital works that will be announced in the Prime Minister's budget later this year, I can safely tell you that once again, not only will we be in every parish, but we will be no more than five kilometers from almost every single township in Jamaica with capital works this year, a feat also that hasn't been achieved before. Now, you're also going to see increases 
in our capital spend as we are realizing the gains from some of our projects. Senator Samuda pointed out that the NWC has also managed to reduce the volumes of water being wasted or stolen, meaning more of the commodity should reach the pipes of needy paying residents. 71% of the water that God blessed us with by way of rainfall, by way of our streams, would be collected. We'd spend money to sterilize it and put in the appropriate treatment of the water. We'd spend money to pump it and pump it either straight into the ground or it would be stolen. Now anybody here who has ever run a business knows that you couldn't survive with 71% NRW. We're happy to report that as of January 2023, we are now below 37% in Kingston. We've cut it in half. Anthony Log, TVJ News. Now, last week we started a topic on balancing love with money. We highlighted how to get financially prepared on the road to marriage. Now, with a continuation, our reporter Cody Ann Barrett now joins me in studio. Cody Ann? Thanks, O'Shane. Arguments about money hamper many marriages. According to an American Psychology Association survey conducted in 2014, about a third of adults with partners report that money is a big source of conflict in their relationships. It's no wonder that financial problems are one of the leading cause of divorce. So this week, we're helping couples to overcome those hurdles. A study by the Institute for Divorce Financial Analysis makes money issues the third leading cause of all divorces, approximately 22%. By seeking financial planning for couples and uprooting the causes that contribute to financial issues in marriage, couples can keep financial dishonesty in marriage at bay and maintain the equilibrium of finances in marriage. But first, it's important to understand where financial struggles in marriage come from. You have to have a very frank conversation together. So you have to kind of let it all out in that, in that session. Now it may take a series of, of conversations to get to an agreement, but it has to be, this is our reality, this is where we are, this is the, the financial position that we're in, and agree on steps to get there. Here are seven tips to overcome financial issues in a marriage. Learn to compromise. Communicate openly and honestly. Set financial goals together. Keep purchases out in the open. Recognize your difference in personality. Discuss your lifestyle choices together. And finally, get help if you need it. So to recap, don't let money issues in marriage ruin your relationship with your spouse. To prevent more than just financial stress, tread Tread with caution and seek timely financial help. Tune in this evening at 7 p.m. in Primetime News for more guidance on how to overcome those financial challenges in your marriage. Oshane? Thanks, Cody. And it's now time for the Business Minute. In the world of business, despite a recent spike in fraud cases locally, the Bank of Jamaica, BOJ, says bank fraud is actually declining. According to Deputy Governor of the Bank of Jamaica, Dr. Jaid Lewis, the value of fraud in the banking system is running at $700 million to $800 million per annum, running companies about $10 million a month per institution. However, the current fraud estimate by Dr. Lewis reflects a decline relative to the $1 billion annual annual average that BOJ found during a study covering a 46-month period ending in 2021. In business overseas, Yahoo plans to lay off more than 20% of its total 8,600 workforce as part of a major restructuring. The tech company is reorganizing its advertising unit, which will lose more than half of the department by the end of the year. Nearly 1,000 employees will be affected by the cuts by the end of the week. Yahoo is the latest tech firm to announce job losses as firms struggle with a downturn in demand, high inflation, and rising interest rates. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, 
The main opposition New Democratic Party, NDP, is calling on the St. Vincent and the Grenadines government to seek regional and international assistance to deal with an upsurge in crime. Opposition spokesperson on national security, St. Clair Leacock, was also calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said assistance could come from the Barbados-based regional security system, RSS, a CARICOM agency which was created out of the need for a collective response to security threats. Since the start of the year, more than 800 murders have been recorded in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. On the international scene, the FBI has started investigations into the suspected Chinese spy balloon. According to officials, the balloon has the capability to monitor U.S. communications and was a part of a larger multi-continent Chinese espionage program. In addition, the U.S. House of Representatives unanimously approved a resolution condemning China over this incident. Meanwhile, the FBI says it's exploring further action against entities linked to the balloon's flight into U.S. airspace. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Raquel Porto for TVJ News. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jordan Ford will have your midday sports report.